where we have to do this. A bit of a hill. His mother said, if you're coming to school, you got to bring your sister because they have to go and work in the fields. So this kid carries his one-year-old sister everywhere. A lot of those kids don't eat in the morning. A lot of those kids, the only place they do eat is at that school. I thought going up that mountain, Mary's meals can reach everywhere that there's a hungry child. Did you see what happens after a simple meal? It just came to life. Love reaches everywhere. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it, certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes, and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview sportsmedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. Parkview Sports Medicine. Become more. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the two six O's dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, Nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walk-In Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x-rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk-in clinic. Call 260-266-4007 for more information. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Someday, you'll get your knee replaced. Someday, a new hip. Someday can be sooner than you think. At Parkview Ortho Hospital, we want to help you get moving again. So we offer a full range of options for joint pain, including outpatient joint replacements and personalized solutions. It's time to reclaim your life at Parkview Ortho Hospital, because someday is today. Learn more at parkview.com slash ortho. Parkview, we believe in better. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Keep it This is an invitation to join a movement 
are propelled by people who care and members who have a share in the place they bank. Good morning, Sam. So when you have the chance to get your first home loan, you know an expert will guide you every step of the way. Or when it's time to buy your new car, you'll be treated like more than just a credit score. Good news, ProFed can get you that payment. This is an invitation to a place where simply belonging can help enrich your whole community. ProFed Credit Union, you're invited. And good evening, everybody, and welcome to this edition of High School Basketball here on SummitCitySports.com. I'm Thad Goff alongside Andrew Wiss, and we are pleased to bring you this broadcast. Northrop taking on Lawrence North. No doubt to be a challenging math- matchup, I should say, for the Northrop Bruins. This Lawrence North team comes in at 3-0 and on the season, and you know it helps when you've got a head coach who's not only been coaching for a long time but has been successful for a long time in Jack Kiefer. He's in his 45th year at Lawrence North, and I do believe he's won four state championships in his career. Uh, that is quite a success, the Hall of Famer. And they started this series, I believe, four years ago, uh, did Northrop and Lawrence North. And this year, Coach Keeper, in his 49 years of coaching experience, uh, he just brings in nothing but the number one team in 4A in the, in the state of Indiana. And a lot of players, a lot of athletes. We're talking C.J. Gunn, offers by from IU and Purdue. They got another senior heading to Butler. I believe the senior quarterback for Lawrence North is headed to IU for football, which... Obviously, as we all well know, Indiana, the best football team in America and probably the universe, Thad. Um, so a lot of athletes for Lawrence North and, and brings in a quality group this this year. And obviously, it's going to be a challenge as the Bruins really lack size. Not a, not a player above 6'5", and there's no real you know, bully inside. Uh, so it's going to be a collective effort needed from the Bruins rebounding defensively in the interior. There are two seniors on the starting lineup for Northrop. They are Kamani Smith and Jaden Billingsley. Now, we saw Kamani Smith uh, play rather well last year in Northrop's game against Blackhawk Christian. Northrop was able to hold with the Braves for a while, at least until, I think it was the fourth quarter when Blackhawk started to pull away either fourth quarter or midway through the third. But either way, Kamani Smith was uh, certainly uh, not an issue for Northrop. Played very well in that game and played very well on the AAU circuit as well this past summer. Yeah, and he really passes the look test. You know, he's six five, athletic, long arms, got a nice, smooth looking jump shot, and, and really last night did some quality things defensively in terms of rebounding. Uh, you know, defending the paint, had some block shots, and and uh, so really meshed well with the with the senior group. But again, Northrop graduated seven seniors that all played you know significant the majority of the minutes. I'd love to see the percentages in terms of points, assists, rebounds. Uh, that graduated last year for the Bruins. It would be, you know, uh, very, very high in all of those statistical categories. And so he's being asked to take on a much bigger role, as is the other senior, Jaden Billingsley. Um, but a very young group for Coach Chamble this year. And obviously there's no bigger test than when you invite the number one ranked team in the state into your gym. We'll go ahead and get a word in from our sponsors that allow us to come out and do these games that we get to do here on SummitCitySports.com. Today's broadcast is brought to you by SummitCitySports.com. Follow us on Twitter at 260 Sports and like our Facebook page, Summit City Sports, and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Kelly Automotive Group is Indiana's number one automotive group with over 1,000 new vehicles and 500 pre-owned vehicles to choose from. Please visit DriveKelly.com. Simple, transparent, and reliable. Tom Steele Tire has been servicing the Fort Wayne area for over 40 years. They will help you find the perfect tire for your vehicle and other auto repair services like brakes, wheel alignments, engine diagnostics, and more. Big Eyed Fish has been around the Northeast Indiana area for generations. Like their Facebook pages for updated promotions and enjoy the best fish in Fort Wayne in a family-friendly environment at Big Eyed Fish. You're invited to join ProFed Credit Union, where we get to know you to better serve you. Sign up online in five minutes or stop by a branch. Join ProFed today and start owning your financial future at profedcu.org. At Ottenweller Contracting, we invest in our customers by providing peace of mind during the entire process from bid to build. Visit ottenwellercontracting.com for more information. Summit Volleyball trains and builds the highest quality volleyball players in the area. 
from ages 5 to 18, our players are equipped with elite-level skills and a foundation of life skills. Jump on board. Together, we can reach the summit. Anderson Heating and Air Conditioning is dedicated to providing the best possible solution for your home or business. A system and a solution that fits your unique needs, visit andersoncoolheat.com. El Azteca Mexican Restaurant has been a Fort Wayne favorite since 1973. El Azteca Mexican recipes are sure to tantalize your taste buds. Visit elazteca-restaurant.com for more information. That's elazteca-restaurant.com. iCryo specializes in whole body cryotherapy, body sculpting, cryofacials, infrared sauna, and compression therapy services. Check out Jalen Smith's signature location on Coliseum Boulevard, located by Blaze Pizza in Fort Wayne, Indiana. We're not too far from there, by the way. Parkview Sports Medicine continues to lead the way in northeast Indiana. Our specialized sports medicine team offers direct access to physical therapy and sports physicians in the new Parkview Ortho Express Clinic located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse in Fort Wayne, Indiana. No referral is needed, which saves you both time and money. Visit parkviewsportsmedicine.com to learn more. Are you interested in developing your basketball skills? Do you have a son or daughter who's interested in developing their basketball skills? There's somebody to my left who might have a yes or no answer to that one. But anyway, if, if that is uh, if that describes you or your child, check out the Holiday Hoops Basketball Development Camp hosted by Always 100 Basketball. It goes Monday, December 28th through Thursday, December 31st. Morning sessions are 9 to 11 a.m. Evening sessions are 4 to 6 p.m. To register, go to always100basketball.com. And for questions, you can contact Always 100 at 260-446-3251. Well, a big thank you to all of our sponsors who allow us to come out and do these games that we get to do on Summit City Sports. A chance for Rod Shamble's Northrop Bruins to get a big victory. And by the way, Rod Shamble is a... Uh, Coach at, uh, if I'm not mistaken, at Always 100 Basketball. His name is uh, listed on the website, so I do believe he does some work with Always 100, if I'm not mistaken. But we are just getting ready to get things started in just a matter of moments. We will be right back after this break here on SummitCitySports.com. Excited about the place that it put us, and the quarantine hit, and we knew we had guys that were going to work hard at home. But just the idea that we could get a lot of them together, working hard at a location where people know what they're doing, uh, was really beneficial. And I think you know that training did a great job for those guys to kind of get the ball rolling for them. And, and uh, they came back in, in the end of June, early July, and it's like they hadn't missed a beat. They were flexible, they were fast, and ready to lift and run and start playing football. So it was a huge benefit for us. To gain an edge on your competition, it starts with a free one-on-one performance assessment. Call 260-266-4007. Parkview Sports Medicine. Become more. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Someday, you'll get your knee replaced. Someday, a new hip. Someday can be sooner than you think. At Parkview Ortho Hospital, we want to help you get moving again. So we offer a full range of options for joint pain, including outpatient joint replacements and personalized solutions. It's time to reclaim your life at Parkview Ortho Hospital. Because someday is today. Learn more at parkview.com slash ortho. Parkview, we believe in better. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And now we'll listen to the starters for both teams. Starting first for the Disney Wildcats. 
31st day, 510 senior, number three, Kaden Getty. A 6'4 junior, number four, CJ Gunn. A 6'7 senior, number five, DJ Hughes. A 6'1 senior, number 10, Shamar Vance. And finally, a 6'5 senior, number 14, Donovan Mahal. The Wildcats are coached by Mr. Jack Keeper. And now, your North of Berlin. Well, there you have the starting lineups as we are just about ready to tip things off. And by any chance, if you came here for a basketball game to Northrop last year and you're watching us live or watching us on replay, however you may be watching, you might notice something looks different in this gym. In fact, just about everything looks different in this gym. It's been, it's been renovated, and i got to say, they did a heck of a job redoing this gymnasium. Yeah, if only we could fill it with fans, and uh, obviously we're looking forward to when we can return to that here in the Summit City, but nonetheless, let's tip it up. And the tip is won by Lawrence North. The Wildcats will get the first possession. It looks as though Northrop started out in the 3-2 zone. And they swing this one over to Donovan McCulley. Here is Shamar Avance. Yeah, and Avance is a very quick athletic guard. He's been playing up at the varsity level for this Wildcat team since he was a sophomore. They and feed it inside to Hughes. And Hughes tips it once, tips it twice, and scores on the second try. And DJ Hughes, I believe that's the Butler commit. He is a load. And that's going to be the great challenge for the Bruins tonight is can they defend the paint, limit the Wildcats to one shot. I think that was Beatty who got the rebound there. Check that. This is Beatty. Caden Beatty who's got the ball in his hands. And there's a three ball from the wing by C.J. Gunn. And he might be the best of them. The 6'4 junior. We saw him on the AAU circuit this summer. Length but shooting stroke as you just saw there. And just a lot of talent for this Lawrence North team. The Bruins are going to have to not let it get away early. If they can keep it close, hit some buckets on this end. Not a lot of pressure defense being applied by the Wildcats as they seem to be working on sort of a matchup zone. Good so ball movement around that zone, and they get it just outside the painted area. Here's Jerry on Reese, feeds it back outside to Schmank, the multi-sport athlete. Not only plays basketball, but he also plays football here at Northrop High School. And again, I think the Bruins really going to have a chance to get some shots. If they can hit them early, maybe build up some confidence. And went off the hands briefly of Jaden Billingsley. He also played football for Jason Dorfler's Northrop Bruins. Offensive rebound there by Kamani Smith. A spin move, and Smith puts it in the hole. And again, young players, don't necessarily work on your crossovers. Don't work on this, this all the stuff that you know everybody's good at, everybody knows how to defend. Work on your ball fakes. He faked a pass and simply pivoted, went window, and I don't care how good you are, the ball fake may be the greatest move in basketball. How about Devin Campos ripping away that rebound to preserve a possession for Northrop? And here's Campos going to fire a three ball. That's a little bit short. And the rebound comes out to C.J. Gunn. Little no-look pass. Smith tipped it. And how on earth did he stay inbounds? Yeah, nice transition defense there by the Bruins. The floater comes up short by Jaden Billingsley, and back the other way come the Wildcats. Hughes off the fake, trying to spin inside against Billingsley. He gets away from him and scores. D.J. Hughes with a nice move. Yeah, and you should be able to stay in front of him out on the perimeter, but nice use of his body there. The concern with Hughes is in the basket area. Schmank lets a three fly. That's going to pull it. The Bruins within two. Jaden Schmank, the sophomore. Sophomore guard at six foot flat. And again, you don't really see a lot of pressure defense thus far from the Wildcats, so the Bruins are going to be able to get 
their shots against the zone. It's just can they knock them down? Avance going to draw the foul. Looks like it's going to go on Schmenk, and it does indeed. That's the first foul of the game. It comes just three and a half minutes into the game, so fairly clean basketball being played thus far. A baseline drive. Avance couldn't get it to go. And he is slippery and sneaky down there. Here's Smith, and they're going to call him for steps. Yeah, kind of came to a one-two stop there, and the cotton candy Nikes of Kamani Smith. Just a little stutter on the stop, and so Avant's going to initiate again for the Wildcats. Yeah, you noticed that before I did. They are quite bright. Here's Gunn with the pull-up jumper, and he knocks it down. C.J. Gunn. And the nice help came as Jerry Reese came from the weak side, but I think the ball screener there, you got to have to hedge that a little tighter on the dribble handoff. C.J. Gunn came off there just unmolested. Kamani Smith from downtown. That's a little bit too strong. The Wildcats looking to beat him in transition, and Avance does just that. And I think he might have got away with some steps there, but that's one thing the Bruins are not going to be able to do if they're going to stay in this game is, well, that There's either. take away. DJ Hughes up to Avance, and Avance will put it in. Looked like halfway up in the air. He wanted to try and dunk that thing, but chose, the be chose better of it. When all was said and done, we'll go ahead and take another look at that while we have this timeout here on the Traction AP replay. And Thad, this is the difference between dead ball turnovers and live ball turnovers. The Wildcats stealing that and turning it into points quickly when the Bruins can't get their defense back and get set. And obviously, Evans is really good at one-foot shots. And if I'm not mistaken, it was Northrop who took that timeout. We've got 3.32 to go in the game. Well, Lawrence North... The JV team ran away with it in the game just before this one, and off to a good start so far for the varsity team as far as Lawrence North is concerned. Yeah, and the Bruins, again, we, we mentioned last night in their loss against Southside, it was a competitive game into that fourth quarter as they fell on the road at Southside, but, you know, they, did, they hadn't played since that Wednesday before Thanksgiving due to contact tracing protocols, quarantined was this boys' team, and, so they did keep it together, a lot of zooms, a lot of team zooms uh, while they were away, but that's taken away. Pass up the floor, Avance again, and he puts it in. This is just their third game of the season, the Bruins. And again, another live ball turnover, quickly converted by the Wildcats. Now, Northrop got off to a slow start last year, but got things going in the second half of the season, finished with a uh, 500 record at the end of sectionals. That ball's poked away. On the floor, but recovered by Caden Beatty. little full-court pressure put on, but the Wildcats are going to beat that. And <laughs> They tried to tip it in. That was Avance, who tried the little one-hand tip way in the air. The lob to Billingsley. It goes right off his hands. And that three-on-one there, they had Hughes on the lob. I don't know why on earth you wouldn't throw the alley-oop to Hughes, the 6'7 senior, and instead you throw it to the point guard, Avance. Jaden Schmink got the rebound there. His pass headed out of bounds. Jerry on Reese gave an effort but was unable to save it. And now the Wildcats really running a trapping defense there in and around half court. The Bruins looking a little disorganized, unorganized as they attack it. You always want to have three people to pass to, kind of trap rules. Here is Caden Beatty. As you see different defenses. D.J. Hughes going to the rim, no good. Yeah, way too easy for Hughes. He got all the way there. You cannot let him go to his strong hand. That pass was a bit away from Billingsley, and now the Wildcats take it back the other way. Beatty knocks down the triple. Caden Beatty from downtown. And again, right now, you have to have three people to pass through. Right now, Kamani Smith should be behind the ball. And there you had three people to pass through. But you always want to have that triangle, trap rules. Smith should be coming up now. Here is Smith, one-on-one. -on -one. Had a little help side there, and he just barely gets it to Schmank. Nice bounce pass by Schmank. Campos hits the three. The only way that pass gets there is the bounce pass. And again, against this longer athletic group, the Wildcats, you're going to want to use ball fakes and bounce passes. Much harder to steal. Good hard pass to C.J. Gunn. D.J. Hughes counted and a foul. 
And I want to call that a nice pass from C.J. Gunn, but at 6'7", D.J. Hughes is just kind of always open. If you throw it high, he's going to be able to get some hands on it. The senior, such a load on the offensive end for Coach Kiefer's team. The tallest guys on this Northrop squad are Kamani Smith and Dalman Alexander. Both of those guys check in at six foot five, and Hughes is able to complete the three-point play. Yeah, we mentioned graduation really hit the Bruins hard, but also in terms of size. Last year in their senior group, they really had consistent size across the roster. As you talk about guys like Tequay White, Quaylen Pettis, Tanoa Ridley, Devin Bainey at six foot eight. So they really had consistent size across the board. Um, and obviously this year with all of these new faces, new bodies, a very different group for Coach Chamble. And so there you we're going to have to focus in on skill, ball fakes against this much longer Wildcat team. Nice little slip pass by Kamani Smith, but the basket won't fall. And back the other way comes D.J. Hughes down the floor, going for the finger roll. Check that, that was gun. It was C.J., not D.J. As Kamani Smith brings it across the timeline. We are inside the final minute of the first quarter. 21-8. Lawrence North with the lead over Northrop. Three ball in and out. And we'll see if Lawrence North holds for the last shot. Looks like they're not going to. D.J. Hughes all the way to the rim. And Hughes 6-7. I didn't know he could put it on the deck after the defensive rebound, but nobody got in that freight train's way, and I mean nobody. He went coast to coast, and nobody even tried to stop him. Turnaround jumper by Smith, and he was foul. 15.6 showing on the clock. Can he take advantage of at the free throw line? Yeah, and you've got to offer some resistance against Hughes. Take a charge, maybe foul him at the three-point line, but you cannot give up those type of dunks. A little bit short on the free throw for Smith. This is a very talented basketball team a year ago that Northrop had. Despite getting off to a slow start, you talk about having seniors like, you mentioned one of them to Quay White, Quaylen Pettis, another one. They had a really talented group of players as yeah, Smith that, is able to knock down one of two. That group really blossomed late in the year and, and gave Snyder um, all they wanted and more in that sectional championship. Really outplayed them down the stretch of that game it, had it not been for Dylan Duff sort of taking over, hitting some amazing shots late in that fourth quarter. That was two shots there by David Beatty. The second one, I don't think he got it off in time. He didn't make either one in the end. But that brings us to the end of the first quarter, and Lawrence North has a 23-9 lead over Northrop. Back after this on SummitCitySports.com. This is an invitation to join a movement propelled by people who care and members who have a share in the place they bank. Good morning, Sam. So when you have the chance to get your first home loan, you know an expert will guide you every step of the way. Or when it's time to buy your new car, you'll be treated like more than just a credit score. Good news, ProFed can get you that payment. This is an invitation to a place where simply belonging can help enrich your whole community. ProFed Credit Union, you're invited. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Start of the second quarter. Northrop's going to get the ball to start this second quarter. They're down 14. Kamani Smith ready to inbound the basketball. Puts it into Jaden Schmank. Double team comes. They nearly got the steal, but Schmank able to control. And some new faces on the court for the Wildcats, number 35, who just, I believe, fouled the jump shooter Smith. That's McCoy and Brown, along with number 13, Armand Hillman, for the Wildcats, and number two, David Beatty. Now, despite the fact that Smith missed that jumper, you know, you're talking about a guy who's six foot five. He rises up right over you. Good luck contesting his shots. Yeah, and his game really translates as he's got a really good mid-range game, can shoot it from behind the arc. Um, and so it'll be interesting where he continues his, his playing days after this his senior year. But, uh, yeah, he's really improved 
his strength and size and, and is doing some good things defensively thus far this year. Able to hit the second free throw. Well, we know his good buddy Quaylen Pettis is off at Eastern Arizona University, a private school. You can guess what state that one's in. As Jaden Schmake will bring that one across the timeline. And right now there's got to be somebody at that elbow. You need, always need three people to pass to when you're being trapped. And they, they need to expose themselves with their hands, show themselves, and come to passing angles against this trapping zone. Catch it, pivot, and then attack this. Usually you should be able to attack for layups and good shots. That's the and third right now, foul of this game against Lawrence North. That ball out of bounds. Sorry, Thad, the coach in me is just extremely frustrated with the lack of passing angles by the teammates. Not the person with the ball, but the individual's who are supposed to be at passing angles as you get trapped, especially against longer teams. There's a high catch by Kamani Smith, showing off that six foot five frame, but Lawrence North gets the turnover, and there's Hughes for the jam, and he was fouled again. Yeah, I think if I was a guard on the Wildcat team in transition, I'd be looking for Hughes on every possession as he is finishing well here in the first half. Well, we'll see how he does on this coming upcoming free throw. Now, how has he done in this game as a whole? He scored 12 points, including that free throw that you just saw. And if you're wondering how to get to, oh, well, 820-plus career wins, 823 to be exact for head coach Jack Kiefer of the Wildcats, you have rosters like this, and you don't tend to lose too many games. Little floater there by Kamani Smith. That's no good. Out of bounds. Last touch by the Bruins. So it's really neat to get a chance to go down to Lawrence North High School and just see the number of Indiana All-Stars that have played at that school. Numerous, numerous NBA players have come through Jack Kiefer's program there in northern Indianapolis. McCoy and Brown feeds it to the corner. Of course, Jack Kiefer was a graduate of Oak Hill High School. He actually coached there before taking the head coaching job at Lawrence North. He has won four state championships. Even had a span where he won three in a row. That three ball off the mark. Putback wouldn't go, but the second chance does. That's Donovan McCulley. And Campos is sitting there backside uh, and in great position. Just got to be much more physical on the box out. And if Alexander can catch that clean, he's going to be able to take that up. But Campos is going to have to be a little more physical on the back side. Campos does have a couple of threes in this game. There's a steal off the inbound, and the basket is good. That's number 15, Jaden Smith. An athletic move by Smith. There's a near takeaway. That was Smith again who almost got that one. A little shot fake there by Avance. Avance looking to take on the defender, takes it to the rim, tip won't go. Avance comes down with it. He was fouled. He did not make the shot, but he will shoot two. And again, every trip you see, even when the Wildcats miss it, multiple opportunities, and you know, that's one thing that makes them a really good team. But obviously, if you're the Bruins and you get that initial stop, you get them to miss their first offering, you got to clean up the defensive rebounds. And the Bruins are going to have to do it by committee this year, Thad, with their lack of size. Avon's able to knock down that first free throw. Well, if you like scrappiness around the rim, Lawrence North has plenty of that. They have shown that on multiple occasions tonight. And again, it's always easier to do when nobody's shoving their back and backside into you on the box out. Every opportunity, you don't need to be good to be physical to be aggressive on your box out, to be determined to not let your man get the ball. You don't have to be a good basketball player to do that. Anybody who walks into a gym can decide to do that. McCoy and Brown was called for the foul. Inbound here goes to Jaden Smith. And there's Kamani Smith getting it across the timeline, trying to race to the bucket. He hits the shot. Will they count it? No, they will not. And on the far side, the officials saw an extra step. I didn't see that. Now he has a much better view, Thad, than you and I, although we are perched high above the beautiful Northrop Gymnasium. We do have a good view over here. 
A drive to the basket. That shot won't go, but a foul is called. I believe that was Gunn who drew the foul, and it was. it would be interesting here. That shot was blocked after it hit the backboard. Now that might be what the officials are discussing here. Yeah, they're I think gonna, they're going to count it. Goaltending. Yeah, Smith came over, and he really elevates well defensively. Came from the backside a couple times last night against the Archers for some impressive blocks. But I think he got that one after it touched the backboard. So for C.J. Gunn, that gives him eight points as he completes the three-point play. The Northrop girls and boys teams were at Southside last night. Southside got a win today. The girls team did. And there's a near turnover. And now it might be a turnover. It is. Took a while to corral it, but right back the other way, Jaden Smith. I beg your pardon, that's Dalman Alexander who knocked it away. And again, if you're Campos and that trap runs at you, you've got to be able to fake at first. He simply tried to throw over the top of this longer, taller defense. You have to be able to fake, step through, be aggressive. The Bruins were there at passing angles. His teammates were. Uh, but simply a giveaway there in the half court. Gunn fires it into play. Nice curl there for your junior guard, Gunn. Gunn couldn't knock down the jump shot, and back the other way comes Smith. Slows it down, rises up, couldn't knock it down, tapped right back out to him. That was Alexander who knocked it back to a standout senior. I give Alexander credit on this end, on the defensive end. He really boxed out well on that shot from Gunn and then sprinted the floor, kept the possession alive by tipping it out. And that's what you want. If you can't get the offensive rebound yourself, a lot of players are taught to just kind of tip it out. Hopefully your teammate can keep it alive for you. Schmink gets it out to Smith. He rises up for three, but that one goes over the backboard. Four twenty-one to go here in the second quarter, and Lawrence North with a 17-point lead. They come right back down the floor. Avons going to be called for the offensive foul. And give Alexander credit again. Again, he, we saw Hughes come down the floor earlier with no resistance. That time the sophomore Alexander stepped right in and took the charge. Well, if you're wondering how easy have things come for Lawrence North this season, despite their 3-0 record, not all too easy. A one-point win against Hammond, a five-point win against Lawrence Central, and then an overtime win against Cincinnati Moeller. That was a neutral site game. And I think a lot of good, really balanced teams down there in Indianapolis. Not just Lawrence North, but you're talking, you know, if you look at the 4A rankings right now, it tends to be a lot of indie schools each year. But I think the balance this year is maybe as, as balanced as it's been in a while. Homestead obviously ranked third right now in 4A. Well, Lawrence North has taken a timeout, and while they take a timeout, it's a 30-second timeout. We'll take one as well here on SummitCitySports.com. There are tons of benefits to using compression therapy, but my favorite are speeding up muscle recovery, reducing swelling and inflammation, and improving my athletic performance. Thirty-two fifteen. we got 3.59 to play in this second quarter. And Lawrence North having a top-notch performance against the Northrop Bruins, but the Bruins will be at the free-throw line. That's Jaden Billingsley about to take the shots. And again, one thing Northrop's going to have to do if they want to eke back into this and keep it competitive is make their free throws when they get their opportunities. Uh, Billingsley a little bit short on that one. I believe Jaden Billingsley was a wide receiver these past few years here at Northrop. His first year playing football, the athletic senior. Played a big role on the Bruin football team as a receiver. His head football coach, Jason Doerfler, is over at the scorer's table. Not sure if he's keeping score for the Bruins or... Running a little scoreboard, scoreboard tonight. Hughes. Three from the corner is good. And DJ uh, Hughes. Smith lost his dribble but got it back. Or was that Alexander? It was Smith. 
And that is tough when your 6'7 senior can step out behind the three-point line. He pushes his own rebounds and finishes with dunks and then hits corner threes. Good shot fake there by Smith. Pulls up but couldn't hit the jumper. He's got the elevation. There's no denying that. David Beatty feeds it over to C.J. Gunn. He looks to attack, draws defenders, and he was hacked. Devin Campos going to be called for that foul. And Gunn drew a little bit of concern from D.J. Hughes. He went over to ask him if he was all right. Looks as though he is. The IU recruit, Purdue recruit, both of those schools won today in the Hoosier Classic. Played down at Banker's Life Fieldhouse. I believe it's still called Banker's Life Fieldhouse. I believe they it still is. Change the name of that arena every other year. Well, CJ Gunn is up to nine points for the game. But an awesome event that uh, those four schools do for the last ten years now. If I'm not mistaken, it was Purdue's turn to play Notre Dame this year in Indiana versus Butler, if I'm not mistaken. That was the second game. Purdue looked really good. Shot it well from behind the arc, did the Boilers. Oh, nice little tip in there by Donovan McCulley. Well, he talked about the scrappiness around the rim, and that basket's going to be taken away. Jaden Smith called for a few too many steps. I believe that was Schmank. There's a lot of Jadens out here. Three of them actually on the floor right now for the Bruins. And nobody Quick back. back down the floor. Avant sluffs, stuffs it home, I beg your pardon. But either way, it was a great stuff there by Avant. Yeah, and everybody sort of paused after the traveling violation. Here's that trapping defense again. Smith, like, wisely attacked it. 2.06 to go. We've seen a few... Good-looking dunks by Lawrence North. That foul, by the way, was the seventh team foul against Lawrence North. It's going to send Kamani Smith to the free throw line. This will be one and one for Smith. And he is able to drain the first one. And we mentioned uh, Lawrence North playing in a very balanced Indianapolis area. Carmel ranked number two, Attics. Indianapolis Attics ranked number four. Cathedral, Westfield, Fishers, Brownsburg, Warren Central, you know, Zionsville, Pike, all of those. Lawrence Central, a, a really good group. And so a lot of balance in the Indy area this year. Um, but this Lawrence North team, as we mentioned, they're going to come up and play three, four Wayne School, Snyder, but then also oh, C.J. Gunn almost stuffed that thing down. Goodness gracious. That was barely kept in play. Billingsley down the floor, left-hand layup, no good, and the rebound ripped away by McCulley. The lob to Avance, and he puts it home. And they're going to tend to the rim. I think they're going to count the basket. There's really nothing to tend to at this point, though. And the game really now getting... Sort of out of hand for the Bruins. But again, on January 23rd, Homestead will actually travel down to Lawrence North, and then Lawrence North will come back up here uh, to play Snyder on February 13th. They're also actually going to play Southside on February 20th. C.J. Gunn missed the dunk. Avance with the rebound, and he is foul. Now, that Snyder team, they have a very young team, a year removed from a sectional championship won by their head coach, Jeremy Roush, and a very talented group of players, no doubt. Michael Ely was a part of that group, as was Dylan Duff, Isaac Farnsworth. Duff and Farnsworth have gone off to uh, Rose Holman Institute of Technology in Terre Haute, a prestigious engineering school. And Snyder has been, I think, the surprise maybe in the SAC this year. They have really reloaded uh, after graduating. Graduation hit that school hard as well, along with Ely deciding to leave um, and so, but they have, I mean, they scored 100 points last night in defeating Northside, 178. And so Coach Roush doing a great job over there at Snyder High School. Michael Ely's elevation prep team has two games today. I believe they're in the process of one of those games right now. That's tipped around. And back the other way comes number 14, McCulley, and he is fouled on the other end of the floor. We'll see who they get here. I think it was Alexander. 
And it is, and that's his fourth. Fourth foul on Alexander, so he hasn't been in that long, I don't think. But he's now in danger of fouling out. And the free throw is good by McCulley. Well, Alexander gets a breather in this case. One for two goes McCulley, and Rod Chamble's going to call a timeout. It's going to be a full timeout, his second timeout of the game. Now, while we have this opportunity, we will hope we will show you uh, one of the tremendous dunks that has taken place. We'll show you the one that took place here in the second quarter. Comes right off a turnover. That's DJ Hughes getting up above the rim to slam that thing down. And again, we mentioned he's uh, sort of one of those players that's always open in high school basketball with his size. I'd be looking for him to easy way to get assists is to throw it to that fella, DJ Hughes. And, of course, worth mentioning, all of our replays are brought to you by Traction Athletic Performance. Traction Athletic Performance was where a uh, former Northrop basketball star, now Snyder basketball star, Destiny Jackson, signed her letter of intent to go to Loyola University in Chicago. And it was an interesting story with her because she initially committed to, I believe it was San Jose State, but now is going to Chicago Loyola. No doubt a difference in a distance between those two schools. But Jackson had a great career when she was here at Northrop, back-to-back -back, uh, double-digit seasons. Yeah, and obviously part of a really good group at Snyder, where they just uh, got all of the city talent, or a lot of it, I should say, um, decided to enroll at Snyder. And a, I believe four freshmen in the starting lineup for new coach over there. Uh, with the with the girls program, Akila Sims, the first year head coach. That name should sound familiar to Fort Wayne basketball fans, and so she's got a quality quality group. What an outlet pass! <laughs> Avance able to run that one down, and he kicks this one out to Beatty. His three comes up short, and leaping up for the rebound was Jerion Reese. We mentioned the Lawrence North quarterback this year was second, in Mr. Football runner up. The lob to Gun, and he jams it home. A transition jam for Gunn. And if there was anything that Lawrence North didn't do right there, it was number one, get back on defense, and number two, turn it over. The lob on the other end of the floor. Billingsley couldn't put it in. Tip wouldn't go. They get it right back up the floor. Avance and the jam by G DJ Hughes. And DJ Hughes continues to add to his masterful performance. Boy, the Bruins have had some, some basket area looks. They have to finish those. Here's that trap again as Avance. That shot blocked and flung up the floor by McCulley. That shot would not go. And it's a 47-17 lead for Lawrence North as we have come to the end of the first half. Halftime here at Northrop. We'll be right back after this break here on SummitCitySports.com. Here we have to do this. A bit of a hill. <laughs> His mother said, if you're coming to school, you got to bring your sister because they have to go and work in the fields. So this kid carries his one-year-old sister everywhere. A lot of those kids don't eat in the morning. A lot of those kids, the only place they do eat is at that school. I thought going up that mountain, Mary's meals can reach everywhere that there's a hungry child. Do you see what happens after a simple meal? It just came to life. Love reaches everywhere. Parkview Sports Medicine's integrated sports medicine team is built to serve the needs of all athletes in all sports. Our team's only goal is to improve athletes in every facet. PSM offers performance training to help athletes get better on the field, dedicated athletic rehabilitation and physical therapy to help them get better off of it, certified athletic trainers in our PSM schools providing daily support to our athletes, and a specialized orthopedic walking clinic when injury strikes. Call 260-266-4007 to speak to our care navigators or visit Parkview 
ParkViewSportsMedicine.com to learn more about what we can do to improve athletes at all levels. ParkView Sports Medicine. Become more. Welcome to the Summit City, home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Joint pain, sprains, strains, or a possible broken bone? Make the Parkview Ortho Express Walking Clinic your first stop when you have an orthopedic or sports injury. Parkview Ortho Express, located at the Sport One Parkview Fieldhouse, gives you access to quick care and orthopedic physicians when you need it most. Get x rays, treatment, and referrals to Parkview Care, all in the convenience of a walk in clinic. Call 260 266 4007 for more information. I was once a Southside kid who was led in a journey by high school football. A journey that taught me discipline, toughness, and the skills that made me a success. As a businessman with a CPA license who owns his own firm, I still use the building blocks of high school sports in my everyday life. Someday sports will end no matter what level you reach, but you will be left with the skills to compete in the next game, the game of life. Someday, you'll get your knee replaced. Someday, a new hip. Someday can be sooner than you think. At Parkview Ortho Hospital, we want to help you get moving again. So we offer a full range of options for joint pain, including outpatient joint replacements and personalized solutions. It's time to reclaim your life at Parkview Ortho Hospital, because someday is today. Learn more at parkview.com slash ortho. Parkview, we believe in better. Thank you for watching Summit City Sports. To help broaden our coverage, we're asking you to become a monthly sponsor to our Patreon account. We produce weekly highlights and live video broadcast. When the Homestead Girls Golf Team won its first state title in program history, we were there. When Fort Wayne brought back three state titles in cross country, we were there. We believe in sharing positive stories and setting the standard for how high school sports should be covered. Join us and donate today. Keep it wanting. This is an invitation to join a movement propelled by people who care and members who have a share in the place they bank. Good morning, Sam. So when you have the chance to get your first home loan, you know an expert will guide you every step of the way. Or when it's time to buy your new car, you'll be treated like more than just a credit score. Good news, ProFed can get you that payment. This is an invitation to a place where simply belonging can help enrich your whole community. ProFed Credit Union, you're invited. We are at halftime. Lawrence North with the lead over Northrop. And uh, Lawrence North, they came into this game having played three close games. If they wanted to come out and get out to a good start, mission accomplished. Lawrence North is up 47-17 to over Northrop. And well, to start things out, we'll go ahead and show you some of their highlight reel dunks that have taken place today. This one was back in the first quarter. These replays, of course, courtesy of Traction AP. And that dunk was courtesy of one D.J. Hughes. And again, as they picked up their defensive pressure, they really forced a lot, and I mean a lot, of live ball turnovers that they quickly turned into points 
like that. They finished them in high-quality fashion. So the Bruins are definitely going to have to take much better care of the basketball collectively, be in correct spots, be strong with the basketball, attack, fake before you dribble as they go against this very, very talented Lawrence North team. And credit to Lawrence North, they just, you know, drove up an hour, 45 minutes and are playing extremely, extremely good basketball here tonight. The replay you just saw was C.J. Gunn scoring off one of those turnovers that you talked about, Andrew. No doubt a good start for Lawrence North, and there are some definitely some good things about this Northrop basketball team, even though they're down 30 points. You know, you watch uh, you watch Kamani Smith play. You see that him use his height to his advantage to rise up over the defenders and uh, get those good looks uh, as far as jump shots are concerned, but uh, struggling today to get those to fall. Yeah, and again, they've had some shots into the basket area that they just haven't been able to finish. And again, that that helps your defense out if you can convert those, right? Obviously, it slows Lawrence North down. they got to take it out of the net. they got to step out of bounds. And they're not pushing it up, and, and they are a quick, quick athletic group. Um, even their subs that come in can really get up and down. And so if you can convert those, if you can convert your free throws, you know, you, you can really make this game competitive. But the Bruins haven't been able to do that. Uh, nor have they been able to take care of the basketball um, at a high level thus in the first half. And so obviously they should still be obviously thrilled to play. They've been quarantined for for over, you know, three weeks, and this is obviously their, their chance to get out and play what they want to do. And so I would encourage them to ignore the scoreboard, simply get out and compete and improve in certain areas. You may not come back and win this game, but improve in this facet and that facet. Let's do this better as we advance further into the end of the year. Well, one more word from our sponsors before we go any further. At Parkview Sports Medicine, it is game on. We serve every level of athlete with our integrated sports medicine team, including the region's only specialized athletic rehab facility. Learn more about our services by logging on to parkviewsportsmedicine.com. Well, big lead for Lawrence North at the half, 47-17. The second half comes your way in mere moments here on summitcitysports.com about the place that it put us and the quarantine hit and we knew we had guys that were going to work hard at home but just the idea that we could get a lot of them together working hard at a location where people know what they're doing uh, was really beneficial and I think you know that training did a great job for those guys to kind of get the ball rolling for them and, and uh, they came back in, in the end of June early July and it's like they hadn't missed a beat they were flexible they were fast and ready to lift and run and start playing football so it was a huge benefit for us. To gain an edge on your competition, it starts with a free one-on-one performance assessment. Call 260-266-4007. Parkview Sports Medicine. Become more. Welcome to the Summit City. Home to the 260s dedicated high school athletes and fans. Each victory and celebration captured by our camera. Treasure the highlights from the Summit Athletic Conference this season or complete games live or on demand. After all, nobody's more proud to call Fort Wayne home than SummitCitySports.com. Someday, you'll get your knee replaced. Someday, a new hip. Someday can be sooner than you think. At Parkview Ortho Hospital, we want to help you get moving again. So we offer a full range of options for joint pain, including outpatient joint replacements and personalized solutions. It's time to reclaim your life at Parkview Ortho Hospital, because someday is today. Learn more at parkview.com slash ortho. Parkview, we believe in... About to start the second half, Lawrence North with a 47-17 to lead over the Northrop Bruins. And we do have more basketball coming your way later this evening. We'll have boys basketball between Concordia and Oak Hill. And it just so happens that Oak Hill is the alma mater of Lawrence North head coach Jack Kiefer. What a successful career he's had. Over 800 wins, if I'm not mistaken, in his career. Yep, 823 wins, 762 of those at Lawrence North. Yeah, he is Lawrence North basketball, the Hall of Fame coach. And, and every year the IBCA holds their coaches clinic a legendary excellent coaching clinic and, and Lawrence North and coach keeper host that always do a great job and I miss attending those clinics down at Lawrence North Avance brings it across the timeline 
That's gun off the catch and shoot, but the three goes out of bounds. Yeah, and you know a lot of teams run that elevator screen, box set, little cross screen on the baseline, and you like it coming out to get your get your junior all star, likely junior all star CJ Gunn a good look. See if you can't get him going. Keon Bates in the starting lineup for the Bruins to start the second half. Yeah, Bates, a sophomore, was the starting quarterback, became the starting quarterback. In fact, I uh, got to do his first game as a starting quarterback. It was against Concordia. And Bates played uh, rather well. Of course, uh, the Northrop football team was very run-heavy, which you can do when you've got a back like Demarius Cowan. Smith comes up short on the jump shot. And that might be some back-to-back -back legs there. Again, the Bruins played last night against Southside, and a lot of the perimeter shots a little short tonight. Of course, the Southside girls not only played back-to-back -back days, they played last night at, I think it was a 6 o'clock tip-off, and then they tipped off again today at 1 p.m., and they were able to outlast a very good Jay County team. If you didn't get to watch that game live, you can check out the replay. It's available on YouTube. It's available on SummitCitySports.com, Facebook, and Twitter. Shamara Avance kicks it to the corner. That's gun for three, in and out. Offensive board McCulley, and he was fouled. And again, if you are the if you are the Wildcats, a really chance here to, to focus in on your X's and O's, maybe try some different things defensively with your zone looks that you want to be able to do later in the season. Um, and so anything you can do to, to, again, if you're Coach Kiefer and staff, ignore the scoreboard. Same thing if you're the Bruins. Ignore the scoreboard and improve on small facets of the game. Well, Donovan McCulley goes two for two there. He's up to seven points for the game. And again, this is just a full court man defense, and, and they'll, they'll trap it, they'll run and jump, and the Bruins just going to have to handle it better, be stronger with the basketball. Well, here's Shamar Avance. He's picked up defensively by Jaden Smith. Avance able to get across the timeline. Almost stolen away, but there's Hughes to the bucket, and he hits the shot. Little roll right over the front of the rim. Yeah, Billingsley tried to come around for the steal. Hughes, such a wide body. That is a lot to get around. Little shot fake there by Kamani Smith. Bates feeds it back out to Smith. Smith drives to the basket. Left-hand shot, contact drawn, no foul called. And the basket is good for Smith. And again for the Bruins, they maybe just need to see a bucket go in. So a tough drive there by Smith. And that might give your team a little bit of confidence going forward. A left-hand shot is good by Donovan McCulley. Tough by the 6'5 senior. Well, if I'm not mistaken, the uh, Northrop JV team was held to... It was 15 or 17 points, if I'm not mistaken, just before this one. The varsity team has eclipsed that. And again, there is that trap. And one of the things that Smith did right away was he dribbled. If you let that trap come and then fake and then attack and then use your dribble to escape, you're just a much smarter basketball player. That's one thing he's going to have to do. They're going to let Bates put it in play. And he'll run the point. In fact, I remember Jason Dorfler telling me that he was looking forward to seeing Keon Bates play in the upcoming basketball season that is now here. Also mentioned that he was looking forward to seeing Jelante Hinton on the wrestling mat. Heck of a wrestle. The two, he, I believe he's wrestling at 220, Jelante Hinton. And back down the floor comes Avance. McCulley left it a little bit short. And credit Bates there, stepping in to take the charge. Made that a much tougher lay-in for McCulley. Little slip pass off to Reese, and he puts it home. Jerrion Reese, the six-foot-four junior. And you see what a defensive rebound can do. They didn't give the Wildcats another opportunity there after the miss lay-in. Avon's able to tip it in after his own miss. Three ball is good. Kamani Smith knocks it down. I believe that's Smith's first triple of the game. 
Right back down the floor comes C.J. Gunn. You blink and you missed him. And again, C.J. Gunn's really good, but he's really good when he goes to his right hand. You cannot let him. you got to find ways to limit really good players, and one way is to force them weak. That's a long three, but it's good. Kamani Smith knocks down another one. Back-to-back -back triples for Smith. And you like the strength there, the lift of Kamani Smith late in the game. It was only a matter of time before he would get one to go in. Caden Beatty from downtown drains a three. Nice ball movement by the Wildcats. Hughes caught that in the corner. Saw his teammate Beatty there wide open on the left wing. Smith going to pull up again, but not this time. Hughes comes down with the board. He would have been officially on fire had he made that as C.J. Gunn flicks the wrist. Back out to Avance. Avance off the fake. The floater, it's good. Nice little soft touch there by Avance. He's up to 13 points for the game. The Wildcats have three double-digit scores as Smith goes to the basket, had it blocked. It's going to stay on this end of the floor. Northrop keeps it. Jaden Schmink will check into the game for Northrop. 2.59 to go here in this third quarter. Long inbound snagged out of the air by Campos. Smith spinning inside. He was fouled, and the shot would not go. Bounced a couple of times off the rim before it came out, but Smith will head to the free throw line. And the defense really closed out on him. Smith not really known for his three-point shooting, but the defender closed out on him, and so he wisely attacked, used his athleticism, and he'll shoot two free throws. And again, this is one area where the Brewers really have to improve and knock down their freebies. They do knock that one down as Jaden Smith hits the first of two free throws. He goes two for two. And you like this out of the Bruins. Again, ignoring the scoreboard, fighting back. Very different than Notre Dame right now against Clemson. A lot of our fans might not like to hear that, but uh, the Bruins competing here and getting some shots to go. Got 31 to 3 over there, and I think that game's in Charlotte. Oh, nice little fake by Avox, and he puts it home. Yeah, a couple times he's just given it up and cut, and his teammates have found him. A little loss on the defensive end, the Bruins' last couple trips. That's 15 points in the game for Avonce. Smith couldn't knock that one down. Avonce quick down the floor. Trying to beat the pack, and he does. He is speedy. We saw Olivia Smith, speaking of Southside, we saw Olivia Smith able to do that so many occasions last night. Just speedy Gonzalez-like, and Avonce quick from end to end. I just so happened to see Olivia Smith again today at Southside. She hit four threes in the Archers' victory over Jay County. A big win and a big lead here at Northrop High School for Lawrence North. Again, head coached by head coach Jack Kiefer. Over 800 wins in his career as a head coach and no doubt done a great job. Now Rod Chamble, he's an experienced coach in his own right. This is, I believe, his sixth year as the head coach here at Northrop. Had a 16-9 campaign a couple of years ago back when Sidney Curry was a part of that team. He's uh, an AAU coach as well, if I'm not mistaken, with always 100 basketball. As we did a little plug for their holiday hoops development camp coming up on Fe December 28th, just right there in between Christmas and New Year's. In fact, New Year's Eve is the final day of that camp. So if you send your kids to the morning session or even the evening session, you can get home in time to ring in the New Year. Yeah, heads up, parents, if you're still looking for some of those last-minute Christmas gift ideas for your son or daughter who loves the hardwood, I'm sure they would love to compete. Going to be a well-attended clinic over there as Jaden Schmank looks to attack. Spins, tough Oh, shot. couldn't get it to go, and it's pulled down by McCulley. And McCulley, I believe, was that quarterback runner-up in the Mr. Football this past season for Lawrence North, headed to IU. And again, no better football program in the entire universe, in the entire galaxy, really, Thad, than Indiana University. 
Well, I'd say that uh, Tom Allen probably knows how to recruit high school football. He himself was a high school football coach at Ben Davis not too long ago. Also coached down in Florida. So we get a kickball here on the Bruins. A minute 14 left to go in this third quarter. And if you're the Bruins, you know, I'm going to take that Tom Allen mantra into the rest of this game and just L-E-O, you got to you got to love each other on every possession and just compete, compete. Tip wouldn't go. Battle for the rebound, and Northrop will take over. Rod Shamble, he got the call he wanted, then he was fired up about something. But his Bruins will get the basketball. They are down 37 points with a minute to go here in the third quarter. This is Jaden Schmink driving to the basket. A little slip pass. No good on the shot, though. Nice find there by Schmink. I don't know how he snuck it through the defenders. Reese couldn't finish, but kept it alive. Here's Kamani Smith. Looking for a step back. He rises up and puts it home. From a tough angle, Kamani Smith. Some people like the up. I really like the under there. Smith using the under and going window. Tough shot by the senior for the Bruins. And it looks as though Lawrence North may hold for the final shot here. Or maybe not. They slip it off to Hughes and he jams it home. And there's trap rules by the Wildcats. That triangle attack passing and Hughes cutting on the baseline. Wasn't a spectator there. Smith kicks it back outside. That's a long three by Campos and he knocks it down. I think that was a 26 and a half footer from the junior Campos. That's how you end the quarter in the Bruins. I believe they had 17 at halftime match that in the third quarter on the offensive end. 68 to 34. We got the fourth quarter left to play here at Northrop High School. Big lead for Lawrence North, though. Back after this on SummitCitySports.com. Sixty-eight to thirty-four, Lawrence North with the lead as we start the fourth quarter here at Northrop High School. On the floor for them, Gunn defending Smith. A little ISO here for Kamani Smith, the junior, blocked by Gunn. Hughes Beatty with it, also number thirty-five. They go quick up the floor. The Wildcats do, and that pass almost went out of bounds. But I think that was Gunn who was there to make the catch. And here's Beatty for three. That's no good. Knocked out of bounds by A.J. Brannigan. A.J. Brannigan getting his first minutes of the game. And I believe that's McCoy and Brown, number 35. Not Brannigan. And then Beatty, I'm going to say Batie and Beatty. you got David Beatty, number, Batie, number two, and Caden Beatty. I think it actually is Beatty. I was talking with one of the assistant coaches before the game, and Beatty was the right pronunciation, as he told me. Schmink on the drive, gets it to fall. Splitting defenders there is Hughes, and he got fouled. I think it was before the shot. Some fancy ball handling there by Hughes. That's only the second team foul against the Bruins. Just one foul committed this half by Lawrence North. And you like that from Coach Kiefer. You know, your team's up 32, and you call a timeout to just emphasize a point here. And to a person, their eyes are on him. 
Well, 68 to 36. We will be right back after this break here on SummitCitySports.com. I choose to do whole body cryotherapy after practices, games, and training. It reduces inflammation in my muscles and allows me to move more agile. Well, we are back, 68 to 36 the score. Lawrence North with the lead over Northrop, trying to go to 4 and 0 on the season. And the Bruins in a little 2-3 zone here in the fourth quarter defensively. A little pass fake there by David Beatty. Pull up three by Gunn, and that comes up short. Hughes tried to get the rebound, but they get it up to Schmank, the Bruins do. Nice save on the baseline by Campos. Didn't just throw it in, found a teammate. Remember, that's one area of the floor where you never want to save the ball. Oh, Schmank unable to get the finish. Here comes Hughes back the other way. The slip pass and a foul. The basket counts. Was that Beatty? No, it was not. It was McCoy and Brown who got the bucket. And Lawrence North will score 70-plus in this game. It's the first time they've broken 70 this season. It's actually the first time they've broken 60 this season. Three hard-fought games coming into tonight. A one-point win against Hammond on a neutral court. And a five-point win against Lawrence Central. And then a one-point win against Cincinnati Moeller on a neutral court. And, yes, that is from Cincinnati, Ohio. Jaden Schmank on the drive. He draws the foul. Yeah, and Schmank is one of those few on the Bruin roster that got some varsity experience last year. He got some experience as a freshman and just a strong guard. He put it there but didn't try to go around the defender, kept it straight line, attacked the basket, and got the whistle. Again, we've got more basketball on Summit City Sports. As Oak Hill will be taking on Concordia, that's a 7.30 tip. Ryan Dellinger will have the call. Lindley Kissler will be working with him on camera. If I'm not mistaken, it's been a busy day for Lindley. A couple of elevation preps games that she had to work. Probably saw some fun basketball over there. Smith had it ripped away. That was Gunn who got the block. Again, even when you get by the first defender, a lot of length coming from the help side for this Wildcat team. Smith made a nice move, but Gunn, give him credit for the stuff. Absolute theft right at the rim by C.J. Gunn. And there goes Gunn to the basket. He flips it off to Hughes, who slams it home. And I think Gunn, the entire time he was attacking the basket there, he was really just trying to pull the defender and share that with Hughes. And Hughes finishes extremely, extremely well at the rim. Schmank trying to blow by the defender, and a foul is called. Well, in case you're wondering what's next on the docket for these two teams, Lawrence North has a game scheduled against Fishers this coming Tuesday as Schmink lobs in a long pass. And for Northrop, it looks like they will have a little break until January 8th when they take on Snyder. And actually, Northrop picked up a we're available, you're available makeup game against Norwell on December 30th. So I just talked to Coach Chamble about that, and they were able to schedule with that with Norwell. They're going to travel to Norwell for that game on December 30th. Again, no SAC tournament this year, and so a lot of SAC teams looking to fill the gap there. Here's Gunn down the floor, blows by everybody, and puts it home. C.J. Gunn up to 15 points for the game. He's one of multiple players, one of three players, in fact, who has scored in double figures on this evening. Smith going to rise up for three, left it short, and a little one-hand rebound snatched away by David Beatty. Gunn was thinking about the three. Might have been deciding there, oh, I'm just going to let a little time tick off the clock before we score our next basket. And it's David Beatty who takes the shot, but it wouldn't fall. Offensive rebound, though, by Caden Beatty. Here's a three from the corner. And McCoy and Brown rattles it home. He used all parts of the rim there. And that outlet pass up to Smith just a little too far. Into the north of cheerleaders, actually, who I was looking for some holiday pom-poms today, Thad, and with 
The Bruins. Well, you're talking just, a little, uh, little green and it. little green and red. Well, you know, we're trying to get festive here, and uh, I was expecting, you know, maybe a little Santa Claus hats, a little reindeer, rain, reindeer antlers. I'm not seeing it tonight. Well, I think that timeout was called by Lawrence North, and you know, if you in this particular matchup, if you go with the green and red, that would match the visiting team, Lawrence North, wearing those particular colors. So, w- whether you're looking for some kind of festive theme. Uh, that might not be what Northrop was going for tonight, and maybe, maybe well, maybe well planned to avoid that uh, red and green as the Wildcats bringing that color in for their logos. Hey, keep them, keep them stretched, keep them stretched. One of the officials, James Payne, over here getting that Achilles stretching, stretching out those calves. Don't want to pull a muscle, especially over the holidays. Just so happens that uh, one of the volunteers at the uh, TV ministry I work for is a referee, Rich Krause. I'll give him a little shout out here. I don't know if he's working tonight. But he does uh, officiating for basketball, football. I believe he also works as, uh, I, he said that he also works as an umpire for baseball and I think even a uh, judge for volleyball, if I'm not mistaken. So he's covering a lot of sports. Shamar Avance across the timeline. Beatty on the drive, puts it up with the left hand, and it's good. Caden Beatty. That was just sort of a five-out clear-out for the lefty. Alexander can't get it to go. Tip-in is good, and on the tip-in was Jerion Reese. A 41-point lead for Lawrence North as they're about to go to 4-0. And uh, you, you mentioned it, Andrew. I'll give you credit for correcting me there. They've got the game against Norwell as their next matchup. And that Norwell team are off to a slow start as C.J. Gunn, he's not off to a slow start. He hits the three. He was off to a good start, and he's headed for a good finish. 18 points for the time being for Gunn. Here's the feed inside, a little shot fake, and a block shot recovered by number 13, Armon Hillman. And you like the move there by Alexander, but once he got the defender to rise up, his dribble didn't take him closer to the basket in terms of attack. Simply went sideways, and I think that was Gunn that was able to block that shot from the sophomore Alexander. But you know, if Alexander can, can continue to use that, obviously he's going to get stronger as he ages, as he grows, but a nice fake and attack there. Well defended, though, by the Wildcats. Well, that Norwell team that you mentioned that uh, Northrop will be playing for their next game, they uh, graduated a good bit of talent, although one key component that they do have back this year is Luke McBride, the son of head coach Mike McBride. The top-notch score. That ball's poked away, and here's Avance stuffs it down. A little exclamation point by the six-foot-one guard. And that's one thing the Bruins have improved on in this second half. We mentioned focusing on small things. They haven't committed as many of those live ball, and that was about to be another one, as many of those live ball turnovers, but that was just one there, and so Avance for his second flush of the night. Lawrence North, no doubt, about to get their most complete performance of the season. Obviously, it's good when you can come away with victories in three straight close games. But in this one, it was early on when Lawrence North put the game pretty much out of doubt, if you will. A little shot fake there by Brown. Gets to the rim, no good. Smith comes down with the board. I think Jack Kiefer in his 49 years has seen better decision-making than that shot right there from his team. Going to get an offensive foul here against the Bruins. They call it on Jerry on Reese. It's the fourth team foul against Northrop. And that was Reese's first foul of the game. And I think Coach Kiefer going to empty his bench here. Mass substitution for the Wildcats. You 
Inbound goes to McCoy and Brown, and he'll bring it across the timeline. It's picked up defensively by Smith. Gun. Check that. That's not Gun. He's uh, gone to the bench. Danny Royster. I beg your pardon. And I believe that's Royster. No, that's Hillman. We got fouled on the interior. And yeah, it will be Hillman who goes to the line. A minute 49 to go in this game. There is at least one SAC game taking place next week as Southside will host Wayne in girls basketball. That'll be a 3 p.m. start on a Tuesday afternoon. I'd have to guess that both Southside and Wayne are out of school at that point. Yep, students got out of school Thursday, Thad, so the holiday break has officially begun here in Fort Wayne. And, you know, that's one of the things with COVID this year. There is just zero routine now in most of our schedules, and a 3 p.m. game on a Tuesday is proof of that in basketball. Not a lot of routine. We have a foul called as Schmenk gets it across the timeline. It was called before the basket. And this will be Northrop basketball on the sideline. It was the fifth team foul against Lawrence North. Kamani Smith with the right hand, no good. And Hillman comes down with the rebound. Was just able to avoid the turnover. Hillman kicks it back outside. A.J. Brannigan for three. And Lawrence North very close to breaking 90 for this particular game. Here's Smith looking to drive to the basket. Tough shot, and he is fouled. You know, Smith does a nice job of falling. That, that is a basketball skill, especially as you attack the basket. Some of the best scorers in, that I have played with or I've seen play, they tend to fall as they attack when there's a bump, and a lot of times that draws the attention of the officials. More likely to put the carbon dioxide into the whistle when you see players fall. Jaden Smith able to knock down the first of two free throws. Jaden Smith is a junior. He's one of four juniors on this Northrop team. Devin Campos is another one, along with Jerry on Reese and Dane Kilby. Reese and Campos both starting this game. And this one goes out of bounds. It's going to still be Lawrence North basketball with a minute and one second left to go in the game. And again, we uh, hope that you also tune in for a game between Oak Hill and Concordia. It's set to tip off at 7.30 with Ryan Dellinger bringing you that broadcast. Andrew, I believe you worked with Ryan last night at Southside. Absolutely. Had the only doubleheader in the city last night, and the Archers were able to win both of those in Don Riker Gymnasium. Of course, we've got the, uh, that was a combination of the Northrop history teacher working with the Southside baseball coach. And we were completely unbiased in our broadcast. There's Jaden Schmink down the floor, able to finish in transition. And you like the way the Bruins are competing through the fourth quarter here, ignoring that scoreboard. And this is how you get better, especially when you've been out due to quarantine for so much of this season. Obviously still very early in the season for all teams. This is Armand Hillman. Draws the double team. Loose ball, and it's taken away by Schmink, but that's going to be how this ball game will end. A final score of 89-42. to Lawrence North, the winner over Northrop, and Lawrence North goes to 4-0 on the season. Northrop goes to 0-3 for the time being. We'll be right back after this quick break here on SummitCitySports.com. Empowered Sports Club, Fort Wayne's premier multi-sport facility and home to Empowered Volleyball Academy. With the deepest and most experienced coaching staff in the region, we've had a 100% college recruiting success rate for the last six years. Be sure to register for upcoming tryouts at our regular location and our new satellite program, Empowered OVC. 
If you're looking for a place where you can not only play volleyball, but call home, look no further than Empowered. 89-42, Lawrence North wins it over Northrop. They go to 4-0 and on the season, and you know early on, Lawrence North really set the tone and started to pull away really beginning in the first quarter. Yeah, and, and got it going uh, early. Not a lot of pressure defense, really. They started in that sort of matchup zone, and then once they ratcheted it up there with that half-court trapping pressure, created some turnovers, got it going, and it really turned into a track meet for the Wildcats. And, and multiple guys, you know, in, in, in scoring, big scoring numbers for the Wildcats, we're trying to decide on our player of the game. But, you know, really the defense turned into offense tonight for the number one team in the state of Indiana, Lawrence North. Yeah, D.J. Hughes was leading scorer with 23 points. Shamar Avants with 19. C.J. Gunn with 18. Those are the top scorers for Lawrence North. Top scorer for Northrop was Kamani Smith. He finished with 16 points. Jaden Schmank with 7. Devin Campos and Jaden Smith with 6 apiece. And Jerry Reese had 4. Well, what do you say we go and give D.J. Hughes the honor of Parkview Sports Medicine Player of the Game? His 23 points and his several fantastic dunks proving to make a difference tonight yeah really a, a fantastic player the future butler bulldog hughes and i think they're getting a good one the six seven player we saw him a couple times put it on the deck so he's got ability to handle it he hit a corner three down here and and so not just a big body uh the six seven senior dj hughes well, that's going to do it from here at Northrop High School. We do have one more basketball game coming your way on Summit City Sports. Ryan Dellinger will be live from Concordia as the Cadet Boys take on Oak Hill. For now, this is Thad Goff along with Andrew Wiss and Deontay Davis signing off from Northrop High School. Lawrence North beats Northrop 89-42 to here on SummitCitySports.com. I choose to do whole body cryotherapy after practices, games, and training. It reduces inflammation in my muscles and allows me to move more agile throughout my profession. I became a believer in iCryo after my severe injury in college at Notre Dame, tore my ACL, and I was looking for ways to recover, ways to get back on the field. So I'm thankful for iCryo.